Hey all, looking over this King Groot buff. Um, I did look at this earlier, but just taking another look now, because there are a few things I want to go over here, but overall, you know, not to bury the lead, I'm incredibly happy with this. This feels like exactly what he needed. Um, King Groot was already a decent champion. Uh, some of you probably are familiar with Dreamin, who has even taken him to war, regularly uses him in incursions, and there are a bunch of other fans of him out there. He's always been, like, nigh on unkillable at high sig. He's just always taken forever to kill things. People who use him in, like, map 7 AQ just kind of accepted that they were going to have to time out at least once on most nodes where they used him. And that's frustrating, right? That really takes away from the experience of playing a champion. So the question is, what did they do to make that better? Well, for starters, I just like this little flavor bit. Um, he's cosmic, right? And I really like what they're doing lately in terms of designing decisions about class advantages. The tech class is characterized by a lot of power control, but especially a lot of direct power control, like power drain and power burn. So what do they do for this cosmic? They make him immune to power drain and power burn. Now this still means that he's vulnerable to power steal, but that itself is flavorful because mystics tend to have power steal over drain and burn. So he's now stronger against techs and he's still vulnerable to mystics. That's fantastic. I, I love when they make changes like that. I mean, it says mystic champions alike, but like I just said, the on balance, this is a much more important defense against techs than it is against mystics, so I really love that. Looking at his personal fury buffs here, um, they have been slightly buffed. I was just looking at Aunt May for the 565 before this, and it said that they did 500 or 484, now they're 501. Not a huge deal, but a little bit extra punch. And his base stats seem to be exactly the same. The Purify is exactly the same, not much to work on there. This 13 seconds instead of 16 seconds should make a big deal, because as best I can tell, the healing on the signature ability is the same, but now it happens faster, which actually means more healing. And the Furies are a little bit better because you get three of them instead of two of them. Overall, um, taking into account his base attack, that's kind of like a, I think a 17, 18% buff to his attack rating while he has his Furies up um, by getting that third one. They don't last as long, but that just means you move through the cycles faster. So I think overall that's going to make fights feel faster with him, even though you lose the Furies, because once you lose them, you get them back more quickly, and you just keep running through that cycle. Um, I mean, they've made it now a Malice thing with this passive, so it goes back and forth. I think that's just to make it a little more easy to read. I'm not really sure that it has much beyond that. A lot of the kit seems to function pretty similarly. I do really like this bit where his furies get stronger and stronger as the fight goes on, because like I said, they were slightly buffed from 480 to 500, but at 100% extra potency, they're going to be 1,000. And then when he has three of them, the base attack on a 5-star is going to go from 1670 to 4670 with three of these furies up. And you can get even more above that. That is super respectable. Like, that's Odin with one fury. Uh, it's getting there. I guess if he gets one more, so four furies would take him to, like, Odin with one fury level of attack. That's pretty darn solid. Especially because um, they also buffed his chance to gain those fury charges. It used to be either attack had a 9% chance, now it's a 20% chance. So you're going to be getting a lot more, roughly double. And as they get stronger and stronger and stronger, this means that you're 
probably always going to come out of the cooldown on Malice with at least a couple, as long as you know the fight's keeping up tempo. That's fantastic. Um, evaded, auto-blocked, or misses. I don't see that coming up a ton, but it's definitely nice, and it is flavorful, right? There are a number of tech champions with some of those three misses, there are also champions from other classes, and I think it fits those, but especially auto block, we see a fair amount in tech, and there are some very annoying defenders like Gilly99, who cause miss. This will allow him to, you know, trigger that miss, back off, and then he will hit harder in the future. I think that's fantastic. Cool down on three seconds so it doesn't get out of control, but just great. I love that. I don't think the auto block will come up that much because you would have to get parried against a lot of them. If he has Malice up, then he's going to purify the stun and hopefully you would then be able to parry them back again. But I'm not sure without testing it just how reliable that would be. That would definitely be something, uh, if I got my hands on him, that I would want to go check out. I would try and duel like a Iron Man Infinity War with the parry mastery and see if I was able to recover safely. Am I able to go in and intentionally trigger that um, to gain extra furies? Because if so, that's awesome. I love this heavy attack change too because I it like bothers me personally when heavy attacks on champions don't really have any utility attached to them. And this allows you to pause all poison and armor break debuffs. That's pretty awesome. My only complaint here is that because of the Malice one, where you spend a Fury buff to pause them for six seconds, if you are fighting a node where you have to land a lot of heavies, or where heavies are the only safe thing to throw, this could start to be a problem because you would be maybe burning your fury buffs more often than every six seconds, and that could be something that you'd have to watch. However, if we go back to what we just talked about with auto block and miss and evade, if you are able to intentionally trigger auto block to get extra furies without getting punished for it, then one of the first fights that comes to mind where you're encouraged to throw a lot of heavies, like against Iron Man Infinity War, get solved. So, I don't know, even that might not be that much of a drawback. We get to the special attack one, I love this, because we talked about how his, he needed more damage, we've already talked about how much the Furies helped this, but this is going to dramatically increase his ramp up. Because I've had friends in the past who say, you know, King Groot's damage really isn't that bad, once you've been doing the fight for two and a half minutes and you have all nine of his permanent armor breaks up. But that is so painful, right? Now, it's not a 90% chance to inflict one armor break. It's a 100% chance to inflict three armor breaks. And it stacks up to ten, not nine. Again, just awesome. And now you can pause them even if they're not indefinite. I also like this little flavor bit, that it reduces future armor up buff potency by 10%. That's kind of interesting, because that means that if you can't keep up with the armor up um, like gain on certain nodes, like maybe we're talking... Red Skull is really the only one that comes to mind, because Iron Man Infinity War has effects, and this says buff meaning it won't work on passives, and somebody like Colossus would be immune to armor break from him anyway. But if you look at somebody like Red Skull, this would blunt his future armor up buffs, which could potentially let you keep your damage up. That's kind of neat. Um, yeah, still the same thing, spend one fury buff to make it indefinite. That's the same as it used to be, although a little more important now because if he's going to be hitting so much harder with those scaling furies, then those armor breaks are going to add up more. Special 2. So the interesting bit here, it used to be that 
if you were in Malice, like his Fury phase, you could get two poison debuffs. That is gone, now it just lasts longer. Meaning that you're not gonna be you're never gonna hit the same poison damage spike. But if you look at that first line there, each hit of his breath now deals 1169 damage, then that means that that second poison was basically converted into that direct damage. And notice it doesn't say physical, it doesn't say energy. So they just took out that poison, that other poison, and now it does that damage is basically unavoidable. It works against poison immunes, even against champions that can take poison, Maybe this um, will get around some other things. They won't be able to heal against it with willpower. I really think that's great. And again, while we were talking about flavorful changes, it's tripled against robots. That's amazing. The only non-tech robot is Dragon Man, and you're not going to use King Groot against Dragon Man. You're just not, because he's going to kill you if you armor break him. It's just a terrible matchup but against all of the tech robots who would resist his poison damage, he just triples down on the direct damage. I love that. That is a fantastic change. And then we get to the special three. As best I can tell, almost exactly the same. You just have this extra rider about the regen buff is paused while he's heal blocked. Love that again. And again... That's a great change that specifically targets a lot of tech champions. Like if you were fighting Punisher 99 with King Groot, which might be a great, um, a great matchup because he can heal back all the block damage and do a lot of damage. But if you're fighting Punisher 99 and you trigger that heal on the special three, normally Punisher 99 would just, you know, automatically heal block you. You wouldn't be able to get anything. Now this just waits out the heal block and then heals. Very flavorful change. Huge fan. Signature ability, you get the regen buff again, and then up to a 100% poison duration that scales at the same rate as the Fury. And this, of course, should stack with the Special 2's bonus to poison duration that's already there. So you're going to be able to get some very long poisons, um, up to 30 seconds, and you're going to be able to pause them for up to 6 seconds at a time. This isn't going to get to Diablo levels, but there's going to be some serious um, damage over time components to this character moving forward. And he's also going to effectively have really solid healing control in a lot of matchups because 10 armor breaks is already through the um, despair mastery going to shut down healing a lot. And even before you get there, you've got poison reducing the healing. And that means that he's going to be doing more damage effectively. So again, it looks like he's exactly as sustainable as he used to be, except with extra utility against active heal blocks, or just all heal blocks. That's great. Yeah, so act uh, extra utility against heal blocks, which hopefully would work against Warlock, and that would be really interesting. I mean, you would be losing power and taking degen, while you were trying to heal against Warlock. But I suppose the idea is that if you were able to keep enough buffs up, that once infection ended, you would then be able to safely heal back up because you would still have that regen buff. There's definitely going to be some interesting uses for this guy. And then this synergy here, poison and armor break duration, I feel like that might be the same still. Either way, kind of interesting. Pretty sure this Crossbones one is new, though, because it references Crossbones Contempt. Starts with two Fury buffs. That's great for Crossbones. And with King Groot, you get... You can have four Fury buffs every time you roll around. And a flat 10%. That means that it goes from 20% chance on each hit to 30% chance. So that flat 10% is a 50% increase on how many Furies you're probably going to gain. So that synergy with Crossbones is honestly phenomenal. 
I really wish at this point that I had a six star King Groot to play with because I this guy's going to be a monster and that's exactly what he should have been that's what they were trying to sell us on I'm really excited for this buff and I do have a Venom pool so I hope they did as good a job with him we'll see when that one comes around let me know what you guys are thinking of this um do you have a King Groot? Do you have him duped? Do you have him high sig? Did you already rank him for his sustain? And are you just, you know, happy that Christmas came early for you? Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested to see people's feedback on this one. Take care, all.